In the previous video, we introduced gas turbine power plant and we looked at how the Brayton cycle can be used in order to model gas turbines. In this video tutorial, we're going to continue looking at gas turbines, but we're going to look at some specific calculations. We're going to look at how we can determine the net power output, the heat input, and the thermal efficiency of gas turbine power plants. So at the top of the screen we have our schematic diagram and we also have our PV and TS diagrams which are used to model our gas turbine power plant. We know that our compression from position 1 to 2 and our expansion from positions 3 to 4 are isentropic and if we refer to our temperature entropy diagram we know that 1 to 2 is isentropic because they have the same entropy value and we know that 3 to 4 is isentropic again because they have the same entropy value. We know that the heating of our air fuel mixture occurs at constant pressure because referring to our PV diagram we can take an index mark on our pressure axis and we can see that positions 2 and 3 have the same pressure values. We also discussed the reasons why we model the cooling of our exhaust gas as a constant pressure process. So from position 4 to position 1 we can see that we have constant pressure. Now we're going to use these diagrams and the information given in the question underneath in order to extract various data and then solve the unknown parameters for this system. So first of all then, we're told that a simple gas turbine draws ambient air into the compressor at a pressure of 1 bar. Well the entrance to our compressor is position 1 and at position 1 we have a pressure of 1 bar. But as we just said, position 1 and position 4 have the same pressure. So what we can write here is P1 equals P4 equals 1 bar. We're also told that the temperature of the ambient air entering the compressor is 15 degrees C, so T1 at the entrance to the compressor is 15 degrees C. Next, we're told that the pressure and temperature of the air fuel mixture exiting the combustion chamber are 9.75 bar and 880 degrees respectively. Well the exit of our combustion chamber is position 3 and for the reasons we stated previously P2 and P3 are equal. Therefore we can write P2 equals P3 and for this example they both equal 9.75 bar. So as we can see here we have an upper pressure of 9.75 bar and we have a lower pressure of 1 bar. P1 equals P4 and P2 equals P3. We're also told our temperature at the exit of the combustion chamber and the exit of the combustion chamber here is position 3. So we can also write T3 equals 880 degrees Celsius. Now we are going to need to convert that to Kelvin for our calculations but at the moment we have 880 degrees C as our temperature at position 3. Moving on to the next paragraph then, we're told that the flow rate of air entering the compressor is 1.6 kilograms per second. So m dot is 1.6 kilograms per second. The adiabatic polytropic index is 1.4. Well the adiabatic polytropic index is represented by the symbol gamma and that's dimensionless and the specific heat capacity is 1005 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Now that's going to be our specific heat capacity at constant pressure and we're assuming that that remains constant throughout the process. We do have a higher and lower pressure here but the variation in the specific heat capacity is going to be relatively small. So we have 1005 joules per kilogram Kelvin. That value will change with temperature so we are making an assumption here which is worth noting. Next we're told that the mass flow rate of fuel should be neglected so we're going to be working with the mass flow rate of our air throughout these calculations. So what are we actually asked to calculate? Well first of all we're asked to calculate the efficiency of our cycle. We're asked to calculate the temperature of the air entering the combustion chamber well, entering the combustion chamber is position 2. It also happens to be the exit of our compressor. Next, the rate of heat transfer in the combustion chamber, which is going to be thigh in. The net power output, P net. 
And finally, the temperature of the exhaust gases. Well, the exhaust gases are position four, T4. So we have quite a few calculations to carry out there. So let's clear some space and then we'll begin our calculations. Okay, because we have a simple gas turbine here and we don't have any regenerative heating or exhaust gas heat recovery, there's a relatively straightforward formula for calculating our efficiency. Efficiency equals one minus the pressure compression ratio to the power of one over gamma minus one. Now our compression ratio, RP, is the ratio of our upper pressure to our lower pressure, or either side of the compressor. So in this case, it's just 9.75 over 1. Now I've used the pressures in bar there, and I can do that because both of those pressures are in bar. All we're getting here is a ratio. So our pressure compression ratio is just 9.75. So calculating our efficiency then, we have 1 minus... 9.75 to the power of 1 over gamma, well 1 over gamma is 1 over 1.4 minus 1, giving us an efficiency equal to 47.83% or 0.4783. So we've calculated our efficiency. The next thing in the list that we're asked to calculate is T2. Now when we have polytropic processes or adiabatic processes, we have the following formulas connecting temperatures and pressures. We have T2 over T1. Note that T2 is the exit of the compressor and T1 is the entrance. Equals P2 over P1. And this time our power is 1 minus 1 over gamma. Note that it's the opposite way round to in our efficiency calculation. So T2 then, multiplying each side by T1 is just T1 times P2 over P1 to the power of 1 minus 1 over gamma. Now although I've not listed this on the left hand side we were told in the question that T1 was 15 degrees C. But what we need to remember to do here is to convert our temperatures to Kelvin. So I'm going to do this part of the equation. We have T2 equals 15. In order to convert from degree C to Kelvin, we need to add 273.15. P2 over P1 is our compression ratio, so 9.75. And this time we have 1 minus 1 over 1.4. Running that through the calculator gives us a T2 value equal to 552.32. Kelvin. So I'm going to add our efficiency and our T2 value to the left hand side and then we'll clear some space and continue with our calculations. So the next thing that we're asked to calculate is thigh in the heat input to our process. Now to calculate thigh in we need to do the following. Mass flow rate, specific heat capacity, multiplied by the temperature change in our combustion chamber. Well, at the exit of our combustion chamber, we have position three. We know that from our schematic diagram. And at the entrance, we have position two. We already have the temperature at position two in Kelvin. But what we need to do is convert our temperature at position three into Kelvin also. So I'm going to do this as part of the overall equation. We have thigh in equals mass flow rate Specific heat capacity is already in SI units, 1005. T3, in brackets here, we're going to have 880 plus 273.15. And T2 is already in Kelvin, so we can use the value as it stands, 552.32. Now when we run that through the calculator we get a thigh in value equal to 966,135 but I'm going to convert that into kilowatts so we have 966.13 kilowatts of heat being provided to our process. So that's the rate that heat is being inputted in the combustion chamber. So if we wanted to determine P net we would need to work out the power output from the turbine and then subtract the power input from the compressor. 
But because this is a simple cycle, there's a more straightforward way. Because efficiency is P net divided by thigh in. Therefore, P net is just the efficiency times thigh in. So not all of the heat that's being inputted into the cycle is being converted to power output or net power output. But we already have our efficiency of 47.83% or 0 0.4783 expressed as a decimal. And we also have our phi in value of 966.13 kilowatts. Therefore, our net power output P net equals 462.10 kilowatts accurate to two decimal places. So let's transfer those values to our left hand side and then we'll carry out our final calculation in order to determine T4, the temperature of the exhaust gases leaving our turbine. Okay, so the temperature of the exhaust gas T4 is interesting to us because in the next video we're going to look at how we can improve the efficiency of our cycle by recovering some of the heat in that exhaust gas. So in conclusion, in this video, we're going to calculate the temperature of the exhaust gas. And then in the next video, we're going to look at how we can recover some of the energy from that exhaust gas through either regenerative heating or using a heat recovery steam generator. But for now then, we know that we have an isentropic process going from position three to position four. We have isentropic expansion within the turbine. We also know that this is a polytropic process. So we can write the following, T4, over T3 equals P4 over P3 to the power of 1 minus 1 over gamma. Now note that we saw this equation previously, except before we were using positions 2 and positions 1, which were the output and input to the compressor. And here we're using positions 4 and position 3, which are the output and input to the turbine. So replacing position 2, we have position 4, and replacing position one, we have position three. We're trying to determine T4. So multiplying each side by T3, we get T3, P4 over P3, to the power of one minus one over gamma. Now, as before, we must work in Kelvin for this formula to hold true. So we have T3 is 880, plus 273.15. This time we have P4 over P3. We'll note that P4 is one bar and P3 is 9.75 bar. So this time we have one over 9.75 instead of the other way around. One minus one over 1.4, giving us a temperature of the exhaust gas T4 equal to 601.61 Kelvin. So in preparation for the next part of the video, I'm going to add that on the left hand side, 601.61 Kelvin. And we're going to keep the data relating to this question because in the next video, we're going to compare the efficiencies when we recover some of that heat. So just to summarize, in this video, we've determined the efficiency of our simple gas turbine cycle. We've determined the rate of heat input at the combustion chamber and the net power output from the gas turbine. And finally, we've calculated the temperature of the exhaust gases, which will be useful for the next video when we begin to discuss exhaust gas heat recovery and the impact that that can have on the efficiency of this cycle.